Anthony Bourdain's Kitchen Confidential. I'll be right here until they drag me off the line. I'm not going anywhere, I hope. It's been an adventure. We took some casualties over the years. Things got broken, things got lost. But I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Thus is the conclusion of Anthony Bourdain's Kitchen Confidential. Though now a household name, Anthony Bourdain did not achieve mainstream notoriety until he was almost 50 years old. A career chef whose resume includes stints at some of the most acclaimed restaurants in New York City, he was a man respected among his peers for his deep reverence for the culinary arts, as well as his acerbic, biting criticisms of the foodie and celebrity chef craze that rose to prominence in the 1990s thanks to the likes of figures including Emeril Lagasse and Bobby Flay. Now before you double check to make sure you're watching the correct channel, yes, this video will still examine a written work. That work is Bourdain's 2000 memoir, Kitchen Confidential, Adventures in the Culinary Underbelly. Please, sit back and enjoy today's edition of Lit Tips. In 1998, Anthony Bourdain was named executive chef at the Manhattan-based French restaurant Brasserie Leal. He had already published two works of fiction, 1995's Bone in the Throat and 1997's Gone Bamboo. Both were heavily inspired by the pulp and noir novels of the post-war years, and neither received much attention. His non-fiction piece, Don't Eat Before Reading This, was published in The New Yorker in April 1999. It explored the seedy underside of the restaurant business, and would serve as the thematic and stylistic template for Kitchen Confidential. Bourdain portrays the culinary world as a rich counterculture with an unmistakable allure. His propulsive stream-of-consciousness prose as he shares anecdotes, observations, commentary, musings, and his always right-to-the-point opinions gives the reader a sense of being right there on the line during the dinner rush. Kitchen Confidential marked a radical shift in the public's perception of gourmet dining. Not one to mince words, Bourdain shatters the refined, illusory facade high-end establishments present to their customers. Taking inspiration from George Orwell's 1933 memoir, Down and Out in Paris and London, with its portrayal of Parisian kitchen staffers and travelogue descriptions of metropolitan life, Bourdain strikes an impressive balance between his almost religious dedication to good food and the often profane nature of the individuals behind its preparation. No matter how illustrious, chic, or distinguished a restaurant appears from the dining room, Bourdain gleefully reveals, it may as well be taken as an absolute certainty that behind the kitchen doors is a ragtag assembly of ex-cons, junkies, sex fiends, drunks, freaks, and conmen preparing your meal. And should you choose to join one of these modern pirate crews, prove yourself able to put up with the early weeks, months, years of abuse, insults, long hours, and low pay. If you hold your resolve and come out the other side accepted as one of them, Bourdain insists that these are some of the greatest people you'll ever have the pleasure of knowing. Assume the worst. About everybody. But don't let this poisoned outlook affect your job performance. Let it all roll off your back. Ignore it. Be amused by what you see and suspect. Just because someone you work with is a miserable, treacherous, self-serving, capricious, and corrupt asshole shouldn't prevent you from enjoying their company, working with them, or finding them entertaining. Now, is this to suggest that all these descriptors apply to all members of the restaurant business? Of course not. But, taking in the book's catalog of decades of Bourdain's own subjective experience, it is a safe bet that there is no shortage of these sordid but lovable types involved. Yet Kitchen Confidential would not be worthy of such praise were it merely a celebration of debauchery and recklessness. For all the wild stories, and there are plenty, Bourdain and his sous chef kicking off each workday by pouring oil over a kitchen counter before tossing a match onto it while blasting the end by the doors in homage to Apocalypse Now. A hopeless addict astoundingly blessed with the ability to bake the best bread Bourdain says he's ever tasted. Bourdain's sardonic jabs at naive restaurant owners who think they can treat their business as a hobby. There is always an undercurrent of genuine enthusiasm and passion for the craft of cooking. With the overnight success of Kitchen Confidential, Bourdain took full advantage of his newfound fame. Until his tragic death in 2018, he dedicated himself to bringing his interest in food and culture to a wide audience through his television shows, A Cook's Tour, No Reservations, The Layover, and Parts Unknown. A follow-up to Kitchen Confidential, Medium Raw, was published in 2010 and found Bourdain reflecting on how his life and career had changed in the decade following his breakthrough work. He even dabbled in graphic novels, collaborating with DC Comics artists to create the Get Jiro series in 2012 and again in 2015. Perhaps Bourdain's most significant legacy is that he introduced the concept of cooking as an art form to a general populace that had never stopped to think of it as such. By not just pulling back, but ripping down and shredding to pieces the veil of pretense and formality that separated restaurant staff from diners, and by actively dismantling the manufactured vanilla persona of the typical celebrity chef, 
He showed that food can and should be appreciated by everybody, not exclusively those who can regularly afford to dine in Michelin-approved eateries. Bourdain's enthusiasm for soaking up culture from lands near and far was infectiously conveyed through his books and television shows. Trying another culture's food is one of the least burdensome ways of stepping outside of one's comfort zone. It's a gateway, the first step in developing a better sense of that culture's way of life. Going down this path will lead to an enhanced appreciation of its language, its music, its customs, and yes, its literature. It's all there for the taking. I'll leave you with one more quote from the man himself. Do we really want to travel in hermetically sealed potemobiles through the rural provinces of France, Mexico, and the Far East, eating only in hard rock cafes and McDonald's? Or do we want to eat without fear, tearing into the local stew, the humble taqueria's mystery meat, the sincerely offered gift of a lightly grilled fish head? I know what I want. I want it all. I want to try everything once. We hope that you enjoyed this edition of Lit Tips. As always, please like this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, check out our other videos, and leave a comment with your thoughts on this video along with suggestions for any books or authors you would like us to cover in future episodes. Until next time, keep reading.